Ooh, toddlers. They're magical little creatures, right? I know if you're a toddler mom, you're shaking your head and maybe have a little smirk on the other side of your screen because you just love them. They're so squishy, they're so cute, they're so sticky. And they can be really challenging because they can throw off like anything that we've been working on at the drop of a hat and you have no idea what happened. This happens sometimes with their sleep. So you may have had a great baby sleeper, never had to sleep train, all always slept on the go, slept 12 hours a night, was a unicorn. And then you're wondering where that baby went when they became a toddler. This is what I would consider a toddler sleep regression. And they happen for different reasons than those typical like four month, eight month and 15 month sleep regression. So let's talk about what toddler sleep regressions are and how to manage them. Hi, my name is Sarah. And as the owner and certified sleep expert at Yours and Baby Sleep, I have worked with toddler families all over the world to get their sleep on track. Sleep is universal. Toddlers all act the same. And I love helping support families through major things like toddler sleep regression. So let's talk all about that. The number one reason why your toddler may be experiencing a sleep regression is just because as they are developing and growing, their behavior changes and they start to uh, exercise their will a little bit more. So you can probably describe your toddler as strong-willed or thick-headed or stubborn because they want what they want and they want it now. And I know that it gets very frustrating when it's in conjunction with sleep, right? Because those are stressful times for everybody. At nap time, you just want them to go down so that you can get your stuff done. At bedtime, you just want them to go to sleep because you're exhausted and probably have a list of chores that you need to do as well. It's important to keep in mind that there's going to be ebbs and flows in our toddler's sleep, but most of the time, the regressions will be due to something behavioral, and we're gonna talk about how to support that. It's important to understand the science of behavior when we're talking about managing our toddlers and their sleep, and this also is going to be helpful for other times of the day because you're likely not dealing with defiant behavior just at nap time and bedtime when you have a little one. It's likely happening at other times of the day. They want a snack, and you say no. They want screen time, and it's not available. They want the toy that their brother is playing with and they can't have it, right? Think of all of these times where we're constantly trying to put demands on our toddlers or say no to our toddlers and they just want something. Now let's backtrack and understand developmentally really quick. Our toddlers have very little impulse control. They have very little ability to behave in a way that pleases an adult. So this empathetic behavior doesn't really establish until we're about five or six years old. They don't really care if you're happy with them or not because all they know is that you really love them regardless of their behavior. So they're not going to act good just because you told them to. They also struggle with understanding consequences. So when they're behaving and we give them a consequence like taking something away or saying tomorrow you won't get the TV all day, it doesn't really align with them because they think in the moment like right now this is what I want. I don't really care about one minute from now. So we really have to understand that when we are dealing with toddler behavior, we're dealing with tiny little people who don't have the full development of all of these coping mechanisms that we do as adults. From a scientific perspective, there are four reasons why any of us behave. I'm gonna talk about three of them. These in behavioral science, these are called functions of behavior. And when we're talking about the three reasons why toddlers behave, it's going to be to get attention, to get access, or to avoid something. I want mom's attention. I want access to the iPad. I want to avoid going to bed. Interestingly enough, and I say this with as much compassion and love as possible, most of the time we continue to see those behaviors happen over and over again, not just because of our toddler and what they want or don't want, but because of what the parents are doing to reinforce the behavior, unknowingly, unconsciously. So this is where this little science lesson is gonna be really important for you as a parent to reflect on your reaction to their behavior and how it might inadvertently be reinforcing or causing the behavior to continue to happen. Let's go through a little scenario. Your toddler is going to bed and okay, you're saying uh, it's time to go to bed. It's time to get in your bed. And you know, like the, the timer's done, whatever your routine is, we have finished our books, we've put our pajamas on and now it's time to hop into the bed and go to sleep. And they realize that this is coming, right? So they understand the chain of events. They don't wanna go to sleep. Toddlers love to be awake. They love to play around. They 
think that a whole party is going out in the kitchen when you're not in their bedroom, which we know is not happening. But for whatever reason, they're not getting in bed. So this is avoidance, right? I don't want to get in bed. And they say, oh, can I just have one more book? Just one more book, mommy, please. Which like every toddler in the world requests. So we have two behaviors at play here. They're avoiding getting in bed and they want access to one more book. So let's flesh this out even further. You say, no, you can't have one more book. It is bedtime. This results in them going into full meltdown mode. So they're on the floor, they're screaming, they're tantruming. I know you're like, oh yeah, yep. Yep. How are you in my house every night? How did you know this goes on? Because I dealt with the two. So they're tantruming. And what we are saying is it's time to go to bed. Like just go to bed. It's time. No more books. If you don't get in bed, then you're not going to get the iPad tomorrow. You know, if you don't get in bed, blah, 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 right? We're interacting with them. Now we've brought in a third behavior, attention. So what they're realizing is I get to avoid going to bed when I request one more book, because when mom says no, guess what happens? I get attention. And all of this is elongating the bedtime process. And again, we're thinking as a parent, like just get in bed, right? Like if I just threaten them or I just am stern enough or I'm just impatient enough, right? Like again, I've been there, then they'll just comply. However, what our reaction to that behavior is actually is reinforcing the behavior. So it's teaching them to continue to do the one more book request, the total tantrum and the avoidance of getting in bed. Oh, but Sarah, like how do we avoid that, right? I mean, this is the question of the hour. What do we do to help support our toddler in that time? And what does it look like realistically? So I wanna go through the same scenario again with you. You're ready for bed, your toddler's about to hop in, you say the timer's done, the books are done. And they say, I want one more book. You say the books are all done, it's time to get in bed. They lose their mind, they're on the floor. We have a couple choices here, but the last thing that we wanna do is interact with them at all. We do not wanna give them any type of attention in order to reinforce the tantrum behavior. So this could look like a few different things. Number one, you just sit, like just sit and say nothing, close your eyes, sit against the wall, just give them space to kind of get everything out. And then when they do get into bed, whether they do it on their own or whether you need to eventually lead them to bed, the second they get into bed, you praise them. I love that your body is calm. I love that you're in your bed. Doesn't it feel so good to rest your body? I'm gonna sit here for a little bit while you fall asleep, right? And then we can give them support that way. So that eventually over time, now this isn't magic. It's not gonna work the first time. It's probably not gonna work the second time. It's going to take time for them to create this new behavior chain in their brain. But what they're gonna start to realize is, okay, I really just want attention and I really just want mom to be here. And the only way that I get those things is when I'm in bed. And then we're gonna see them get in bed more willingly, minus all of the requests and the stalling. It's also important to keep in mind that when you say no, you mean no. So it's really uncomfortable when you say no and you understand that that means a toddler tantrum is gonna happen, but we have to work through that process and establish a new behavior path for both the parent and the child in order to get to the other end and make it to a peaceful bedtime. The biggest thing to keep in mind as you have now listened to a very extensive behavior science lesson <laughs> on your toddler is that we can see this come in ebbs and flows after your toddler, I would say hits the age of two or three. You might see that you have like two or three really good months of sleep and then they hit a developmental milestone. Maybe their speech really picks up and increases. Maybe they've learned a really big skill at daycare or school. Maybe they're experiencing a little separation anxiety because they just started back to school again, right? Maybe September is coming and they're starting a new classroom in their pre-K four. Whatever the situation is, that can actually translate to them really feeling the need for control or feeling the need to express their will in any way possible. And they innately know that the easiest time to express their will when they might actually get their way is at bedtime because that's when we're at our weakest as parents. That's when we're just like, whatever, whatever I can do to satisfy you and go to bed, what is it? I'll give you the world, right? So what I want you to understand is that if you have this behavior support in place and you're also catching them when they're good on their good days, it's gonna be much easier to ride out these regressions 
when they inevitably happen. If you're a toddler parent, I would love to know. Be sure to like this video and leave a comment below on your biggest challenge with your toddler's sleep. Are you experiencing a regression? Do you think it's related to teething? Maybe, maybe their molars are coming in. Do you see a correlation with their behavior and how they're acting at bedtime or nap time? Tell me about that in the comments. I would love to hear from you. If you can't tell, I love this stuff. I love toddlers. I love supporting them and I love the science of behavior. It's something that I studied in great detail after I got my master's degree when I was a special education teacher and it really helped in the classroom, but it mostly helps me support parents as they're trying to manage their toddler's sleep. So what I would love for you to do if you're struggling is get in touch with me, contact me, head over to the caption and click on my contact information, maybe even schedule a call to learn about what it looks like to work one-on-one -on -one with me. And even beyond that, make sure that you subscribe because I'm constantly publishing new toddler sleep content and you'll be the first to know of a new YouTube video when it comes up. And as always, from my living room to yours. Thank you so much for being here today and I can't wait to see you next time.